The Minnesota Vikings suffered a gut-wrenching loss in the home opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The game uh, at which they honored the late, great Bud Grant, they weren't able to pull it out. And in an extremely Vikings fashion, uh, outgaining their opponent by a hilarious margin and being the more skilled team on the field, but finding a way to lose it. Me and Josh tell you what went wrong next on Bite Size Vikes. <laughs> Welcome back, Vikings fans, to another episode of Bite Size Vikes right here on the Bite Size Sports Network. As always, I'm your host, John Boyd, a.k.a. Johnny NFL. And back together again, I've got uh, my old co-host and co-host for Bite Size Vikes going forward, Josh Blimisand, uh, writing for Mike on the Vikes, where you can find him. Josh, how the heck are you? I'm doing well, and I feel like I should start by... Ex- I think I'll I'll assume the responsibility for the Vikings loss. I was I was nervous for no reason going into the game and so if any fan needs a scapegoat out there, you can use me for week 1 and don't worry, it gets better than this. We're still going to win the division. We're not going to knee jerk reaction. It was a bad bad way to end or bad way to start the season, especially with the tough couple games here coming up against the Eagles and Chargers, but uh this team, this team will be all right. We're too good to not be all right. So <laughs> excited to be here. <laughs> That's an excellent phrase. This team is too good to not be all right. It's, you know, it's <laughs> it's such a talented group. And you saw flashes from the offense. You saw flashes from the defense. Yep. Um, but but just not able to. And credit to the Bucks. That's a team that didn't beat themselves. Yep. Uh, the the right. Vikings certainly did. Um, and. In, in more ways than one, let's let's start with the offense. Um, and I think the elephant in the room is the turnovers. So let's go through all three of those. Uh, three turnovers. The Bucks didn't turn it over once. Um, right. When we're you know, sort of ass- assessing and assigning blame for things like that, um, it's – I think a lot of times it's too – it's you know it it's too pinpointed. Uh, more often than not, more than one thing went wrong, or, or you know there's culpability at at multiple positions uh, within multiple roles of the team, and I think that was the case for all three of these turnovers. Um, you know you you assign some of that blame to Kirk for sure on it. It, yep. At least, at least some of it on all three of them. Um, right. But let's start with the with the uh, pick. He's trying to fit it into a tight window to KJ. Um, I haven't watched the all twenty two yet, but I was at the game. It looked like a quarters look from the defense, um, where you know the the corners in a in a trail technique on him, kind of on mm-hmm. his back hip. And you've got the poach safety starting to sink down on the slant. Um, and, and Kirk was trying to fit it in just underneath the safety so he didn't hang KJ out to dry to to get his top taken off by the safety. Throws it a little bit too behind him. It still sort of kind of hits KJ in the midsection. And then the ball gets ripped out by mm-hmm. Jamel Dean. So, like, again, you know, you you probably don't need to be that aggressive right there. Um, especially within field goal range, you can't turn the ball over. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, in a vacuum, it wasn't a terrible play. Um, I think you could say just as much as you could say Kirk shouldn't have thrown it. I think you, sh- you could say KJ should have reeled that in or at least not allowed it to be picked. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that play? Yeah, so I I went I was trying to watch the all twenty two tonight, and I got through parts of it, and I I did focus on the first half because the you mentioned turnovers, the elephant in the room. If this if this team doesn't turn the ball over, 
we might be up 17-3, at least 17-10 going into halftime. And then, you know, then when the Bucks come out in third quarter, they we don't care if they dink and dunk and throw like Baker Mayfield throws the ball after every a split second and they have a 16 play drive that, you know, that nets them points in the second half. It's just not as big of a deal. Um, but the, the KJ intercept, the interception on the pass to KJ Osborne, if you watch Kirk before he does kind of pump fake to the left before he comes to KJ. And I think if he, goes to KJ right away. It's a tight window, but I think it's much a much better chance of getting caught because it was a little behind KJ. You know, it's one of those plays where it's in the it's in the midsection, you're an NFL receiver, like so I do think that, you know, got to you you think you got to make you, I feel like you should make that catch and um, at the bare minimum, it shouldn't go right into the hands of the cornerback <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um, to find to find interception but i do think kirk was late on that pass um i don't mind that he threw it to be aggressive um against a team where we should we should have we should have had more opportunities we just didn't have the ball the second half or at least it felt that way we had one nice drive um but outside of that it was just it was way too much baker mayfield on the field and didn't make sense to me because our defense didn't play particularly bad um Mm -hmm. they they gave up the long drive and they had the they kind of had a break in coverage on that on the Mike Evans touchdown, but outside of that, we were the, the Bucks were not scary on offense. Like we shouldn't have been afraid of them. So I, I'm okay with Kirk taking a taking a shot there. I just think he was either indecisive or his pump fake was a little bit too exaggerated. Whatever it was, what he saw to the left before he threw to KJ. Yeah, I think he was pumping to KJ. First yeah, thing. it's yeah, and it set him back just enough, and it threw off the rhythm. And I think that. It put KJ in a tough spot. You'd like to see him make a great play on it. So I think you can give, you can assign a percentage of blame to KJ, but I think Kirk has to shoulder some of that too. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's one of those plays where we don't even, we don't even talk about it again. If, if we do what we're supposed to do and win the rest of the game, like that's, that's the big bummer about it is that the whole issue last year with, was that our defense was so bad and that our offense had no margin for error and against the bucks with our defense playing pretty well, we should have had margin for error. And we just, you know, we just all didn't give ourselves enough opportunities. So that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think, like you said, there's a percentage of blame on both, on both players in that, in that sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it starts to matter so much more when you're only going to get three possessions in the second half. Um, in the whole second yeah. half, um, where you're going to concede these, concede a nine minute drive to start mm-hmm. the second half, uh, it's going to be difficult. Now, that was one of my least favorite plays, given that they <laughs> turned the ball over in the red zone, yeah. but it, it was also one of my favorite plays, potentially my very favorite play, because Jefferson oh. comes out of the end zone <laughs> and absolutely baptizes Jamel Dean. <laughs> Uh, Jefferson's helmet's the one that came off, yes. uh, but he didn't seem phased by that, and uh, and he was pissed. That was no. that was such a sick shot. Um, for you yeah. know, that was that was the only sort of uh, redeeming quality uh, of that play for me. I thought that was yeah. really cool, uh, to see Jefferson just and that I think that into it. Yeah, and I think that. I think that's what people need to realize if, if anyone's still thinking that, cause I see some people, and I don't know if they're just trolling, trying to get people going in those Viking fan groups on Facebook, like people who are questioning why you pay Justin Jefferson to be the highest paid in the league at that mm-hmm. receiver. Like there's still some people that don't think you should spend that much money on one player, but you have a guy who wants to, to win you the game when he's given the opportunity, he's a complete game changer. He's the best at his position. And when things aren't going well, he's pissed. Not because he's pissed because you're losing. He's pissed because it didn't go well. He's not pissed he didn't get the ball. He's pissed that they blew that opportunity right before halftime to take a 17-10 lead. And so, what does he do about it? He he sends a message, and it was a it was such an awesome hit, and it was a clean hit too, and it was great. And you could tell, like he he just he's a gamer. He wants to win, and I think you know that's the culture we want on this team. So, I. I took I took that little positive out of it too. I was like, I, at first I was like, don't don't break your shoulder doing that. Like, <laughs> yeah. my God, you need you need those arms to catch balls, my man. But just but the laying hit, the absolute lumber. But, yeah, but the hit he laid was so awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I I love that. But you know, for what it's worth, and and another, you know, this one is probably more on Kirk than anything. Uh, it was the Antoine Winfield fumble sack. 
Mm-hmm. Clean rusher, though. And I, and I think that comes back to O'Connell's play calling throughout this game. Uh, I mm-hmm. thought it was a real Kevin O'Connell dud. Um, yeah. there's no reason this offense shouldn't have put more points on the board. There's no reason this offense should have had as many three and outs as it did. No. Um, because when it's in, what's frustrating with him is when he has good sequences, play calling sequences, it's really good. Um, and then you see him sort of revert mm-hmm. back to this, tight end screen ridden oh. formula that that's never ever ever worked no um who had the who had the over on cj ham targets <laughs> i made a comment i know i made a comment to my dad i was watching at my dad's place and i was like it's almost like kevin o'connell is trying to justify the fullback on the roster and i'm like you don't have to justify that the vikings fans we want cj there we love cj mm-hmm. but stop featuring him <laughs> As, as a playmaker right now. Yeah. Like, that's not going to gain us any yards. Yeah, literally. And and to that point, you love CJ as a as an extra pass protector out of yeah. the backfield. Um, and on that Winfield uh, play, he had two guys coming through the B-gap yep. uh, that that he, he had to pick up. And you're always working from the inside out when – you when you have two hats on you, um, whether that's as a tackle or as a guy coming to fill in like CJ. So he took the linebacker uh, who was further inside. That's the straightest path to the quarterback. CJ did the right thing there. Um, mm-hmm. the, we we just lost that math equation. Right. Um, and that happened a little too often for me. Um, yeah. I said, I mean – I was big on this at at Skullfest at our live show. I was telling everybody, um, yes, the Bucks defense worries me a little bit. Todd Bowles is an aggressive play caller. He can really dial it up. Uh, he's seasoned, but and that and that was those are the kind of defenses that gave us a lot of problems last year. But I said we've been we've been going up against this type of defense all camp. So we should be prepared for those kind of pressure looks. Uh, we should have counters. We didn't have blitz counters. We were mm-hmm. throwing deep balls. No. The concepts took too long to develop. The Bucks had blitz counters. They were Baker was willing to just throw hot and take what we gave him. Uh, yep. For the most part, yep. the the Vikings didn't seem to be, um, or at least O'Connell's yep. play calling wasn't conducive to that. And again, I, yeah. I do want to dive back into the into the all 22. Um, but it was pretty frustrating. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't understand either that like Kirk, I love Kirk cousins. I think he's great. He does have some deficiencies though. And one of those is he's not he, like, he's not mobile at all. Like you, and you have to, you have to, and like you said, you've been going up against a similar defense at camp. You have to be prepared for, what are you going to do in these situations when you know Kirk's not going to do one of those little spin moves that an athletic quarterback's going to do? He's not going to, yep. you know, make a juke move in the backfield and buy time. That's just not his thing. He doesn't extend plays very often. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he can roll out just fine, but those are on design bootlegs. Those are on design rollouts. And if you're not doing that, you know, he's not going to he's not going to avoid anything or give you a chance for that. And so that yep. it's, it's it's frustrating when you see that happen again after a full year of you know those sorts of things like that's why he takes so many hits like he's got a he, he's tough well, he hangs in the pocket but he, he can't get around him yeah well he can't he can't excel off off script right. so for me yeah you know you can you can harp on that as much as you want as you know just a general vikings fan or a football fan you can say you know Kirk's limited and and that's why we need a better quarterback or right. Kirk's limited. And that's why the Vikings need to go in another direction long-term. That's all well and good. Um, for the most part, I probably agree with you, but that doesn't help anything this season. He can't right. excel right. off script. So if you're going to win with this roster, the script needs to be better. Yeah. Um, which is why, and, and Kevin O'Connell is fully aware of his <laughs> limitations and his strengths. Right. Um, and I, and I think if you were to cater the offense a little bit more to that, 
And, you know, yeah, I know how effective Kirk is rolling to his left on play action. I know how big of a, uh, a piece of his offense that is. But the reality is, especially against that front and, and uh, when they're really dialing the blitz up too, he's not going to survive these seven step drops. He's not going to survive these deep play action rollouts. <clears throat> so let's just work the quick game and move yep. up and down the field because we can do that too. Um, yep. You know, you got guys who can win early, like JJ, Addison, right. KJ, yep. TJ can box you out and get you a few yards. Um, I liked Chandler out of the backfield as a pass mm-hmm. catcher. Uh, Madison yep. as well is, is serviceable there. Um, right. So that's what's frustrating for me is, right. you know, you know <laughs> what ingredients you have. Um, and, you know, it's – when. When you're Kevin O'Connell, it's got to all be catered to that, and and you've you've got to just maximize the talent better, um, right? And you've and you've got to you've got to. It sounds oversimplified, but I I was at the game. You just need to target JJ at all costs. Yeah, there were a couple <laughs> times he was missed, um, but when he's covered, he's open. Uh, yep. I I would much rather have seen the the interception on a ball you tried to force to JJ. Um, is is an example of that, right? Um, and what happened? Right. What happened to all the the Justin Jefferson little tunnel screens that we ran last year to just kind of get him going, um, to get him in right. some space? He's also so effective after the catch. He's such a strong runner. Um, yes, you've got you've just got to feed him. 10, 12, 15 times a game at minimum. Um, right. It's just, it's just got to be more of a point of emphasis. And I know he had eight catches for a buck 43. I know that he had a good game, but yeah. he's that good, you know? So make them, make them take him away. Um, and when they do use him in those little quick areas where you can just get him a free touch out in space and, and see what he can do. Roll your dice there instead of with a tight end screen or a little flare screen um, uh, on a ghost block from, for like Ty Chandler, which that was a fine play. Um, Right. But, you know, just use your playmakers, your real playmakers um, and, and make them, make them take that all the way away, frankly. Um, Which again, sounds like oversimplifying, but I I think sometimes it is a little bit simple. Yeah, well, and and you have to look at like he had seven catches for a buck thirty eight in the first half, and he only had two catches in the second half. Like, mm-hmm. if they did find a way to take it away, then like you said, you got to force you got to force it to him a little bit. You got to get him in motion. You got to hand him the ball once or twice. Like, there's nothing wrong with that either. He's he's a good enough runner to do that. Um, and then speaking of the running game, that's a whole other thing. I don't know if you want to get into that yet, but. Um, our running game has got to do something has got to be more consistent. And that maybe that's how we solved some of those problems. Cause if you look at the box score, the pat, the passing offense was pretty solid. I mean, you had, you know, cousins through for three forty four, and your target share is almost ideal in terms of you have JJ getting 12 targets, Hawkinson getting nine, and then Addison and Osborne getting six. You have your weapons all getting a, a good, you know, solid run of targets, but, you know, you're not going to catch every target. And how do you how do you get more opportunities? You stay on the field more. And our running game, I mean, mm-hmm. Madison had, what, 30-some yards on the ground? Like, that's that's pathetic. I, Madison's not the best running back in the league, but he should be – every other game he started in the past few years, he's – not every other game, but most of the games he started have been over 100 yards. He's been as productive or close to productive numbers-wise as Dalvin Cook. Like, he's – Oh, yeah. He's a he's a good back. He's a capable back, and you got to use that run game to open everything else up. You got to use it to stay on the field to give yourself more opportunities, and that's that's what was frustrating for me when I was watching the all twenty two back tonight, or just and just general highlights. Almost every running play, the line was instantly a half a yard in our backfield, getting pushed no back by the Bucks. Yep. And, you know, Vita Vea, one of the best all time, perhaps like you, the Bucks, again, they have good, they have good guys up front to do that, but 
but every play it felt like you're getting pushed back. And if you can't get any sort of, you know, nudge in the right direction, I mean, you're just not going to be successful. Even with the passing attack that we have when it's clicking, it's just really, we got to put it together. There's got to be some balance there. Yep. And yeah, it, it felt really one dimensional. Um, and that's the weird thing is, is the, the offensive line was a good run blocking group last year. Mm-hmm. And, and we really didn't see that, you know, it's, again, it's, it's kind of a new running game scheme um, going to a little bit heavier personnel. When we run um, going to a little bit more uh, power here and there than strictly outside zone, like it has been for so many seasons. Um, yeah. But again, I, I think there's plenty of kinks to work out there and, and I think they went away from it. A little yeah. a little bit too much but up on the screen here i've just got the the second half so all three turnovers come in the first half and yep. you're still 10 to 10 right <laughs> and then you give up a nine minute 75 yard drive uh to just take the air all the way out of the football and then your touchdown drive to answer takes you all the way into the fourth quarter tampa bay punt Vikings three and out. Tampa Bay uh, takes over four minutes off the clock and kicks a field goal and make it 20 to 17. Vikes get the ball back with over four, uh, uh, a little over four minutes to go. Three and out, down yep. by three. <laughs> um, the Bucks then bleed the clock all the way down. Um, so we've talked a lot about the offense obviously stalling, particularly in the second half. Um, they were moving the ball a lot better in the first, uh, but but then had the turnovers. In the second half, they only got first downs on one of their three drives. But the kind of the final thing, on the last drive, first of all, uh, on the field goal drive, there was a potential missed offensive pass interference on Mike Evans on the boundary. Yeah. Um, that in the stadium, I know we were pretty pissed about, uh, but then on the final bucket, <laughs> Buccaneers drive, uh, you know, Flores is sending heat. Uh, it's, it's a passing down. The, the defensive backs are playing off man coverage to uh, account for that. But the DBs need to know where the sticks are especially yeah. on that play. I was losing my mind when <laughs> Godwin caught that ball on the seven route at the sticks. Yeah. yeah. Breathing room. That's inexcusable. If he, if he beats you deep, he beats you deep. Uh, but if you don't stop them here, you don't get the ball back and the game's over. You know, right. at that point, <laughs> backpedal to the sticks, plant your heels and g- get in the mix on that play. Yeah, you drive forward. You're ready to drive in forward. Any space. Yeah. You've got to know where the sticks are. That was, that was really frustrating as well. Um, yeah. But outside of that, the defense was fine. Um, it wasn't yeah. a ton of pressure. But again, I, I think Tampa Bay was more ready for this style of defense than we were. And we were playing similar styles. Um, yeah. And, and that's where the rubber really, really met the road. Once we evened the playing field with those turnovers, it, we should have been right. blowing them out by halftime, like you mentioned. Um, probably should have had three scores by halftime, and yeah, it's just it's just really frustrating. And there were the, a lot of opportunities and a lot of shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah, and for for the record, you talked about missed calls. Um, I think it was on the it was the field goal drive. I think at the first in the first half that got us to ten points. Um, we should have scored a touchdown that drive. KJ was held going across the middle in the end zone, and Kirk had him. Yeah. Um, and he was held pre- held pretty bad, and it was missed. And but that was on first down, and then second down, we try a draw play because Josh Oliver had gotten us inside the ten, so it was like first and goal. There was the KJ hold or the hold on KJ that wasn't called. Next play is a draw to Madison up the gut, and we like basically lose a yard. I don't know. Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was the other frustrating thing is like. You know, you can't count on all – like, we should have got the penalty. I get that. That's not our fault. But, again, when you can't run the ball, when you can't push the pile forward for anything, you know, because then the fi- the third the third and goal play was it was just a you – know, they tried to hit 
Jordan Addison in the back corner. It never was going to be a completion. It, it seemed like a play that just was too well covered. Um, and it was just frustrating. We had to walk away with, with just three points there. And so, the, the, you know, missed opportunities in the first half, like you mentioned. And then our defense played good, but then the, no defense can stop how short <laughs> Baker Mayfield was throwing the ball on that long drive. Yeah, I mean they 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 moved the ball down the field and they got a touchdown and they t- took up you know 14, 15, 16 plays I think it says there but it felt like it was it felt like it was third and two all second half yes yeah and it <laughs> felt and it and, they were yes. and I felt like you know we we had some decent pressure moments where I started to be ex- I was excited because I was like we're not we're not just gonna sit back all year and and let 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 us be dinked and dunked but then that drive was kind of a dink and dunk drive. Um, because it had to be because Baker Mayfield didn't even throw for 200 yards. Um, and <laughs> he just like, he wasn't even that good. Um, and it was just really, it was annoying because we didn't, we weren't able to stop those short passes. Um, I will shout out since we're, if we're trying to find positive, especially on the defense, I'm going to shout out Josh Metellus and Ivan Pace real quick because um, Metellus kind of got beat on the Mike Evans touchdown. It looked like it was a, it looked like it was kind of a miscommunication because if you, when you go back and watch the all 22 right before that, the Mike Evans touchdown, it's almost like in unison, Jordan Hicks and Harrison Smith do like a, a right arm point to that side. And then the ball is hiked and all of a sudden I have Evans is behind Harrison Smith and he's beating Metellus and he's in for the touchdown. So I was yep. like, I want to know, was- I want to know what, I want to know what was said on the field there because if something, somebody missed something, um, so Metellus wasn't perfect, but he also had a really nice containment play when Baker was rolling out and he didn't run up and let Baker throw it, lob it over him. He kind of kept his ground. He knew where the, like you said, knew where the stick was mm-hmm. and he knew Baker had five yards to go. So he kind of waited it out. And then when it made sense, he, he forced him out of bounds and forced the punt. So I, I, I really liked that play for Metellus. Um, and then Ivan Pace, one of my blog posts was about he, he's going to lead this team in tackles. It's a bold prediction I took. And I mean, he was right up there in the top tackle. Then he had six on his own um, <laughs> in the game. And, and, you know, he looks really good. I mean, he's, he's smaller, so he got, he got swallowed up on a, a run or two, but, mm-hmm. but he's going to be a tackling machine um, as a linebacker for us. So, yeah, there was one, there was, I liked pace too, but there was one play uh, where Baker was scrambling up the up the right boundary and uh and it looked like pace had a beat on him to keep him short of the sticks on a third down scramble and he just couldn't couldn't force him to the <laughs> ground before getting across uh that was really frustrating um but a couple other bright spots on the defense while we're on that subject uh cam bynum was a really sure tackler and was in the right oh, spots yeah. all game um and harrison phillips had a whale of a game yes. uh, he single-handedly stopped a drive um yep late in the second late in the first half if i'm not mistaken with a uh he swallowed up a run and then batted down a pass uh on second down and all of a sudden it's third and long and it was just two big yeah. Harrison Phillips stuffs um, yeah he did he did his best Alvin Tomlinson impression for us and if he can literally if he can string together performances like that we're we're in good shape up there yeah yeah, I liked that a lot. Um, also, quick shout out Jordan Addison. We didn't even talk about the Jordan Addison touchdown, oh, yeah. <laughs> first round pick against yeah. the end zone in his very first game. I think it was a scissors concept against quarters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the corner bit to JJ's corner route from a uh, slot alignment, and Addison ran a post from uh, from a wide alignment, and the safety he he got behind the safety. In, in what I think was an, another quarter's look. And uh, and Kirk identified it early and, and put it on the money. Yeah. Um, so that was that was huge. It was good to see him oh, get yeah. on the board right away. A um, couple other nice catches from him. But, yep. you know, it was sort of to be expected. Uh, but it was nice to see him kind of cash in. Yeah. Yeah, 61 well, yards. You don't... Or... Yeah, and you don't want – when he's a is a first round wide receiver, you don't want people to start grumbling when he hasn't like produced anything, and you don't want those narratives yeah. to leak into the media. So when you see him, when you see him be the you know the second the second highest yardage getter in the receiving game behind JJ, it's you kind of that that's what we drafted him for, and he he's been rising to that occasion all preseason. But to do it in a game and to get into the end zone, that's great. Gets that first one out of the way, so he doesn't have to stress about when he's going to get his first touchdown. Like 
I, I do. That's I think that's a that's a big positive for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I'd have a real dynamic duo. So that was ex- especially exciting. I uh, liked Josh Oliver too. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, who, who made some noise in the past game, and it was a great run blocker as expected. Uh, last thing I want to cover with you, Josh, is, and I'll let you go first. Uh, what would you say is one key to Thursday night's, <clears throat> excuse me, Thursday night's game at Lincoln Financial Field against the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, defending NFC champs? What is one key uh, to the Vikings? pulling out a win here uh what needs to go right we need to keep kirk up, upright um i went back and looked and the sack percentage for the eagles last year was like best in the league by a, a significant margin and um you know they the eagles didn't look as dominant as people i think thought they were going to be against the patriots this week but what they did look really good in is upfront pressure especially from the interior um yep. You know they draft they drafted a ton of defensive linemen that I would have liked to see go come to us at some point or um, it, it was always it felt like the whole draft was like oh that guy's going to the Eagles now that's not fair like it's not fair that, that guy gets to be on the Eagles like yeah. you know uh, with Jalen Carter and then you know even Nicobe Dean from last year is is still a good young young player so they because they lost some guys in for free agency but I don't think they are get, they lost too much of a step in pressures. Uh, um, Dean Dean will be out for this game. Turns oh, out, oh, so that's okay. That uh, might work in our favor. So there's that. Um, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry to cut you off. I just saw that news. Um, no, that, that that's that's important. Games. Yeah, no, that's important. And they and they like they only sacked New England twice because I looked it up. I was like, I wonder if they wreaked havoc in that regard. And they and they they did, but they didn't get to the quarterback as much. And so I think. Um, you know, the, the trend that the unfortunate trend for us right now of getting defenders just flying through uh, the interior of our offensive line. I think that the key to the game for us is if we can prevent that a little bit, if Kirk has enough time um, or if, you know, we've talked about the scheme from O'Connell, if he play calls around it, if we're not protecting, um, I think we have, we have, we have a shot to put up points. If we can put up points, we'll be good. Um, I'm going to, add a second key to the game just because last last year was so frustrating to watch week two against Philly <laughs> and it's the pass rush on our side. Um, mm-hmm. and it's kind of boring, but last year Jalen hurts dropped back and I felt like he just planted his feet, hopped around, looked through all his reads twice and then made a decision that had to be smart at that point. Cause he had so much time. That's what it felt like um, from that standpoint. So I, the, the Eagles are going to score on us. You know, they're going to have some big plays. Jalen Hurts is going to scramble for some first downs, but I want him uncomfortable. If we can at least make him uncomfortable, I think we have a shot. Like I want, I just want him to feel the, the heat of something coming at him for yeah. at least, at least sometimes. I don't know. I, I feel like that's not too much to ask, but <laughs> yeah. So I guess a pass rush would be my key to the game. You know, yeah, pass rush on the other side. in our, in our favor, I suppose. Yeah. That's a, that's a safe bet. Um, the interior is still a concern. Um, we didn't actually mention the Ed Ingram punch fumble. Um, oh, God. But, but the interior is a concern. Uh, Darisaw missed a few plays, but yeah. uh, I think it was like 15 snaps he missed. Um, but but he's back and healthy. Bradbury will miss the game, so we'll have Schlopman at center. Ryan O'Neill didn't allow a single pressure on Sunday. Yeah. Um, you know, so we, we still have a great tackle duo, and that's, you know, what yep. ten months removed from from his injury, maybe only yeah. nine. Um, so that was awesome to see. But yes, and it's the Philly interior that's more of a threat as well against yeah. our interior, which makes it really, really worrisome. Um, on the other side of the ball, though, you talked about pass rush. I think that'll be really important for sure. Um, and something we can take heart in is how well New England played Philly. Um, and how tough they hung with them last week because yep, for sure. we'll be able to present a lot of very similar problems mm-hmm. um, schematically. Uh, some some things Philly has struggled with uh, last year and, and now a little bit this year as well. Um, I, I think at the very least, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it competitive. Um, yep. I think the offense will be able to 
do some things here and there. Um, I think you'll see KOC come out with at least, uh, you know, a, a first drive script that is refreshing. Um, mm -hmm. He'll have to be in the lab this week. I, I think you can't just leave it at, hey, protect the football. Um, right. <laughs> there, there's got to be some changes to uh, the play calling as well. Um, yes. And, uh, and, and some more wrinkles to add. Uh, maybe they were just uh, – <laughs> maybe they weren't showing all their uh yeah. showing all their cards just to wait for Philly here, but they maybe should have shown a few more. <laughs> um but yeah, you know that that's something I think we can yeah. we can think about going forward. Like, hey, we're able to present a lot of this the same things that, that Belichick and the Patriots ran in week one that gave them some issues and, and they'll be adjusting to stuff like that too. Um but yeah, if I, I think if we can get home a couple times on Jalen, um, maybe make a couple plays on the back end. The coverage wasn't particularly good in week one in a vacuum, mm -hmm. um, but but guys guys played well enough to win. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I think if the Blitz gets home a couple more times and you can at least have that threat a little bit more, the coverage should hold up okay. Um I mean, the Patriots have you, – you probably like their corner room a little bit better, but they don't have world beaters back there. No. Um, nope. You know, Jonathan Jones, Marcus Jones, Jack Jones. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Kyle Duggar at safety uh, is is sort of a queen on the chessboard for them. But we we have comparable talent, in my opinion, and, and, and comparable scheme. So our yep. defense against their offense I think could be a, a decent matchup. Um, I worry about our offense a little bit more against For their sure. defense. But you know, sure. if if you're able to push the ball downfield, um, if the if you're able to have any success in the run game, oh, and it would be so nice. Keep keep that D line from having its ears pinned back all game. Uh, then we might have a shot if you have a balanced offense. Right. Um, but you know, it's it's tough to predict. Uh, Another thing to take heart in when we had a Thursday turnaround after a loss last year, going from the Dallas loss to the New England game, uh, they showed up mm -hmm. and, and had a great game. That's right. Um, so you know maybe maybe KOC can get them fired up again and yep. and have a similar result. But a rough week. Uh, it's gonna it's it's gonna be a really long ten days if we are zero and two after thursday <laughs> yes. uh we were I was just gonna say as a fan i was just gonna say as a fan I'm, I'm excited for the quick turnaround too so we can we can move on but i didn't think of yep. that side of it if we follow oh and two i have to watch the whole sunday monday slate and then wait a whole other week i don't know i'm gonna be really? in rough shape i'm gonna be in rough yeah. shape John. <laughs> that would be a long long <laughs> week yeah oh man well josh thanks for joining me uh, thanks for everybody listening or watching at home if you're listening on spotify uh follow the other team specific podcasts we have stuff like this coming out for uh six teams i think now um and more to come and uh if you're watching on youtube make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button before you get out of here helps us out a ton and uh, we will be consistent consistently putting out uh at least one episode a week uh, but more like more than likely two maybe even three some weeks if we really feel like talking um but in the meantime josh where uh where can the viewers find the rest of your work outside of bite Size bikes yeah so uh mike on the is just my own little blog uh i finally have a tagline uh premium fan delusion so i'm not going to break any news <laughs> I'm not going to give you the best X's and O's analysis, but, uh, you know, we're just right about our favorite squad. So when you need to find more purple discussion at some point, find me Facebook, Twitter, or Mike on the bikes.com. Thanks for having me, John. Beautiful. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, it will be the two of us more often than not, uh, going yep. forward. And, um, yes, you can also check out if you like the rest of the NFL in general, rest of our team specific podcast also necessary roughness which airs every tuesday night at eight central it's our flagship nfl program 
Uh, check out the bounce on Thursday nights if you're into basketball. If you need help with your fantasy teams, check out ADP on Wednesday nights and the Rumbles of Red on Friday nights right here on the Bite Size YouTube channel, uh, Bite Size Sports, that is. Um, and, and stay tuned. This will be up on Wednesday. Um, and Josh and I will see how it goes, uh, but we, we might record Thursday night or Friday night and uh, get another episode out to you to recap the upcoming Eagles game here very soon. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. This has been Bite Size Vikes on the Bite Size Sports Network. We'll see you next time.